Have you ever watched a knife review channel and wondered how they can afford all of those knives? How's it going, everybody? I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And let me know in the comments section down below, have you ever just wondered, what does this person do for a living? Today, we're talking about a knife that I think is pretty dang cool. And yeah, it's already out of the box. It's already out of the box because it didn't come in its own box. This knife has not been released yet, but it is available on Kickstarter. And I think that you should check it out. So we're going to talk about it. This is the AZ USA Blitzkrieg. Let's go. Change, you filthy animal. How's it going, everybody? And in my hands today has got to be one of the most photogenic knives I've handled in a while. And I've, I've handled some pretty sweet looking knives. This is the AZ USA Blitzkrieg, and it is manufactured by Miguron. Uh, real quick, let's go ahead and go over some specs so you know what we're working with here and I'll give you the price I'll talk about what I like what I don't like and then give you my final thoughts on this uh, first and foremost we're looking at a three and a quarter inch blade made of m390 it has a carbon fiber inlay on titanium handle scales that are about eh, 4.3 inches long um, it's not super big as far as the knife is concerned, but you do get titanium backspacer, titanium 3D milled pocket clip, single sided captive pivot. Can I get an amen? Uh, TA hardware all around, which I think is absolutely fantastic. There are a couple methods of opening and closing. Uh, first and foremost, you have the flipper tab. And then of course you have the deployment hole. Now this deployment hole slot deal is actually super, super fidgety. You can of course reverse flick it or you can also thumb flick it. You could also decide to be civilized and you know, slow roll it because you know, we don't have to be all action all the time or maybe we do. I mean, it is called the Blitzkrieg, right? This is Sparta! I'll let you decide. Uh, there is very minimal billboarding here. And when I say minimal, I mean, you get the steel on the blade. There it says M390. And then you get the logo, which I'm not super familiar with Arizona USA Blade Works or AZ USA Blade Works. Um, but apparently that's their logo. This is the knife. And you might be wondering, okay, M390 titanium carbon fiber inlay. It's going to be pretty expensive, right? Well, yes and no. And I'm going to say yes and no because it is expensive if you don't like buying knives that cost over a hundred bucks. If you do buy knives that cost over a hundred bucks, um, this is not terribly expensive given the material composition and also the quality of the manufacturing. Uh, you can get this on Kickstarter right now for $189. I don't have a dog in this fight. I don't have any affiliate links. I don't have any connection with AZ USA. This, this was a pass around knife. Uh, this knife was passed around in lefty EDC's pass around group. And that's how it came to my table. No, I do not get to keep this. Although I'll let you in on a little secret. I kind of wish that I could, um, if you get this as part of the Kickstarter, it'll cost $189, and they're looking to ship these out sometime around December of 2023. So depending upon when you're watching this, if you're watching this in 2024, chances are it's probably already been released, and you might actually be able to buy this without doing the whole Kickstarter pre-order deal. Um, okay, let's talk about what I like. There's actually a lot to like here, first and foremost. Uh, the aesthetic is fantastic. I'm a huge fan of harpoon style blades, and this is like a harpoon spear point. We've got a nice deep swedge here at the top of the blade, which 
not only looks good, but it also offers a, a fair amount of cutting relief. Um, I know in a prior video, another popular YouTuber recently said that he thought that the geometry was too thick because of the spine of the blade here, but he kind of discounted the fact that we have a decently sized swedge there. And I just want to mention that. Um, it does get fairly thin behind the edge, and I'll give you an idea with a quick cut test. Keep in mind, this, this is not a fresh edge. This knife has been passed around. Does it cut paper? Yeah. Could it cut paper better? <laughs> sure. Uh, what paper cut tests do, if you didn't know, is they really show us the cutting geometry because it's not about whether or not it can cut paper. It's about how well it can. And in this scenario, there's no rips or tears on a non-fresh edge. And so I'm going to, I'm here to tell you that while it's not a laser beam, it's going to cut just fine. Now that we've got that out of the way, um, I really, really enjoy this choke up point on here. The ergonomics are going to fall into the category of yes, I like it. Uh, we like this a lot, in fact. It, it provides a, a choked up grip very similar to that of a Spyderco Para 3. This knife is not super long. It's like three, it's like 7.35, 7.6 inches long. Um, so we're in Spyderco Para 3 territory and the ergos are very similar to that. In a choked up grip, which is my favorite with, this, with the supporting thumb here on the spine, um, ergos feel fantastic. Now I will say this in a regular grip, it does feel a little tight, but I can still get a full four finger grip back here. The reason why I'm not as much of a fan of this is because of the pocket clip, but I'll save that for later. Uh, something else that I like is the hardware T8 hardware all around. Yes. Thank you. Can we make this a norm? Can we agree on that? Okay. Now that we have, we'll move on. Something else that I like is the detent. That is the lightest flick ever, and the moment you pass over that detent ball, it's coming out. Uh, can you push button it? Yes, you can definitely push button it. Can you light switch it? Absolutely. freaking lutely The action on here is fantastic, and so is the acoustics. I'm a really big fan of the acoustics on this knife. It almost makes a ratcheting sound. Um, acoustics might sound like a dumb thing to appreciate on a knife, but yeah, I enjoy it, and so yeah. I really enjoy the jimping right here before that harpoon point. That jimping is really well done. It's deep enough to grab the meat of your thumb, but not so deep that it feels like it's cutting into your thumb. They don't feel like teeth um, or sawtooth blades. They're, they're just very adequate. I really enjoy that. The balance on here is good, and you can index it very well, or at least I can. The balance point is going to be right about there, right where your index finger is going to land, which is great. It's going to feel nice in the hand. How is the lockup? Well, that's going to make its way into the I like this segment, which is, man, yeah, the lockup, not an issue at all. No blade play. There is no pivot lash. Fantastic. Blade centering, also good. And if you want to know why that locks up so well, it's because we're looking at about 35, maybe 40% on that lock bar. So it does a pretty dang good job. All right. Now, I don't have a whole lot to talk about in the negative category, but I will go ahead and mention a few things. First thing I'm going to mention is this pocket clip. Now, uh, I know that the other YouTuber I mentioned said that he didn't like how stiff it was. It is rather stiff, um, but I did put it in and out of my pocket, and it really wasn't an issue. It, it held tightly in my pocket, um, but rather the one thing that I dislike is, is that I feel like this pocket clip is entirely too long. The reason being is, is that in a normal non-choked up grip, I do feel the tip of that pocket clip right there in my palm. If it was a little bit shorter, it would hit my palm right there, which is going to be hollow, and I wouldn't feel it at all, which is why in a choked up grip, I don't notice it. But in a regular grip, I do. It's not necessarily a hot spot, uh, but I don't like to notice my pocket clip when I'm holding my knife. I, I just don't. The next thing that it's not really a negative, but I'll, I'll mention it here anyways. I wish that they had been 
a little more creative on the carbon fiber. While this is extremely photogenic, and I'll, I'll pop some pictures up here on the screen, I do kind of wish that they had used a fat carbon, dark matter carbon fiber inlay, um, or, you know, like a camo carbon fiber inlay, or even a separate titanium inlay that just has a different texture on it. Um, to have those options would be fantastic. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this carbon fiber inlay whatsoever. I would have just liked to have seen some flair there. You know, I, I like it when I see companies take risks and that would have been a bit more of a risk for those of you who, uh, like regular carbon fiber, uh, you'll like this. The, the inlay work is is decent. I won't say that it's the best inlay work that I've seen, but it's definitely decent. And for sub 200 bucks, I think that it falls in line really well there. So here's my final thoughts on this knife. For $189, I actually do think that this is a good deal. Miguron is the OEM and they do a really good job on manufacturing knives. They take criticisms well, they listen to people and the overall design is very attractive and useful. Whether you're in a reverse grip or a choked up utilitarian grip, this is going to get the job done. The geometry of the blade is on the thicker side, but they might actually be cutting that down. I'd have to check the Kickstarter to be sure. It is still slicey. Uh, this is slicier than many knives that I've had that have just as thick of, of blade spine. So there is that. I really, really enjoy this knife and, you know, like so many others that I've had in my possession recently, it's going to be one that I'll miss when I say goodbye to it at the post office, but I'm confused and I'm confused because when I look at their Kickstarter page, I see that they only have about 29 backers. That's it. 29 backers. And that's, uh, that's a little shy of what they need to get this thing off the ground, at least for Kickstarter. I don't get it. The price is right. The materials are right. The fit and finish is right. It's been reviewed by popular reviewers who also gave it a positive review. And so when I think about why it doesn't have more support, the only thing I can think about is the timing in which the Kickstarter came out because this knife is great. I am very motivated to go ahead and back this myself because I really like this. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Why do you think that this knife hasn't received uh, more backers on Kickstarter. If you're part of the crowd that says no, am I right? Is it about the timing? I know that near the end of the year, we've all spent loads of money on knives. And for most of us, our budgets just can't take it anymore. Is this something that you're interested in? If not, why not? Are you going to take advantage of it? Have you already backed the project? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you wanna check out more awesome knife content, Make sure you click on the video that pops up next.